Hi. In this video, we'll talk a little bit about what, in a marketing sense, favors an entrepreneur, an existing or an, an entrepreneurial company, a startup, and what favors an existing business and how that dynamic plays out. Because, of course, whenever you're an entrepreneur, you need to be able to figure out how you can use your size, the flexibility in the, of the startup to your advantage versus what existing companies have to do and how they manage their customers, what makes it more difficult for them. The net is, for an entrepreneur, existing products and existing markets can be very, very challenging because the existing companies out there already have a lot of customers. So if I'm launching a new product, let's just say I'm launching a, a, a new type of, um, of a candy bar or something like that, Existing players like Hershey's and Cadbury's and all that, Cadbury's, they have customers that they know. They have supply chains and channels. They could send people out and do their surveys and all of this. It's an existing type of product line, an existing marketplace. They can get data very easily, and, and it's existing customers that already know their brand. So from their perspective, they have a really strong data advantage against us. We just have to trust our gut. That doesn't mean you can't launch something that's new and everybody likes, but what it means is that when it comes time for the big players, Hershey's in this case, or Nestle's or whomever, to launch their competing products, they'll be able to launch with packaging and size and ingredients and all of that that are well market tested, and you will have to be responding to all of that. They may take your market just because they're, they have much better data, and that's what you have to worry about. They understand what customers want and they can gather the data to do that. Anything that goes into existing players' market space is difficult for the startup. But we do have an advantage. When something is new, when a new market is occurring, we talked before about leveling the playing field and this idea of creative destruction, making the rules the same for everybody, leveling that playing field. That is what favors us because existing businesses are used to responding in normal ways. It's what's called the core rigidities. They're used to doing things the way they've always done it. So if the markets are shifting and people are moving away from their existing product lines, for example, they no longer like chocolate or there's a whole new product set that doesn't include uh, some core product that they're normally, uh, that people are normally used to using, some key component, they have a hard time shifting their market set, all of their products, their suppliers, everybody is formed around developing that product. They also, interestingly, have this idea of what's called the tyranny of their current customers in that their existing customers are already happy with the products they're buying from the big guys. So they'll typically say, no, 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 we like these products. You don't need to go over there and start something entirely new. The products you have are fine. A little tweak here, a little tweak there is all we need. And existing companies tend to make incremental changes to their existing product lines as opposed to something revolutionary that changes the entire market. In fact, if you look around, you'll probably notice that's a tendency of large companies just to make small incremental changes. Electric cars, pure electric cars, needed government incentives, and now the startups like Tesla and others because the, the earlier the gasoline cars would make hybrids, which added some electricity, electrical components to it by taking advantage of braking, but it was basically a gasoline internal combustion engine that drove the car. It just became more efficient because you could use some electrical power as well. So incremental improvements, yes. Radical, um, much more difficult for them. The other problem we have that, that faces the large companies, it faces us too, but sometimes because of some of the methods we talked about in a prior video, of these anthropological studies and you go really try to figure out what's people's buying, what's behind people's buying behaviors. Um, users tend to not really see a new product. They see what they currently buy and they also see minor changes to it. So if an existing business asks questions like, do you like the car companies? Do you really want just an electric car that can only go 100 miles? Uh, their users are going to say, no, they're used to a 300 miles and they can get gas anywhere, right? So having this plug-in problem, their customers are going to say, I don't think so. That's not something I would buy, you know? And all their customers are going to say that, and that's who they talk to. And so their users also have this same sort of lock-in. 
to the to what it currently exists. We as entrepreneurs, when you start a new company, you actually want to find new customers. You have a hard time taking old customers. You want to find new customers. Tesla with the with the electric automobile finds some people that are that are new customers that wouldn't necessarily be buying um, the the same old same old automobiles, but somebody that buys it's very sporty and um, and has a, a sort of a, a panache associated with this electric car. So you want to go after the new customers, young customers, people entering the marketplace, someone that might not have bought this product before. That's what entrepreneurs tend to go after. So that's what you want to think about what your advantage is. The key lesson is that entrepreneurs do better when you launch new products into a market, but it provides a solution to an existing product need. So there's a need out there that customers have. They're used to solving it in one way, and now you solve it in a new, unique, and better way. The existing players have a hard time with that. That's the strength that we have as entrepreneurs. In the next session, we'll start talking about the buying patterns and market dynamics, how markets evolve over time, and what that means when we think about marketing and market planning for an entrepreneurial business. We'll see you for that discussion next.